All right, this video is talking about the basics of dealing with web work and what you need to know about them. Web work is hopefully relatively straightforward in terms of being self-explanatory, but not all of the little features necessarily are. So first of all, if you are in a course that web work is attached or used as one of your online homework assignments, all of those homework assignments are under a page or collected together in a page that says homework in your Canvas course, okay? So I just picked on one of my courses where web work is enabled, picked on the homework page, and this is the same whether you're in this course or one of the other courses, and you'll have a chart that has all of your homework. This course actually clearly indicates which set is a web work set and which sets are not. Um, depending which course you are, they will be marked in different ways. Some of the courses have the web work sets where they are marked after the whatever the set name is with a WW standing for web work. Um, and one of my courses, the unmarked homework sets are the web work that's the default one and the ones that are marked paper are the ones that are out of the textbook. Okay. So they're actually done several different ways depending which course you're in. Thought of it in different ways depending on the course. So I'm on purpose going to pick on a web work set that is already past due at the time of this recording. So in terms of getting to this set, you can totally just click on the assignment inside of that chart. Okay. And what it will do is it won't take you to web work, but it will take you to the corresponding assignment inside of Canvas. And this is where your grade is going to dump once you started um, working on the web work set. Now, quick note about your grades. The very first time you go over and click on this button right here, which takes you to the actual assignment and questions in WebWork, regardless of whether you start entering answers or not, you've now set up or initialized the connection between the two assignments in WebWork and Canvas. And from that point until the due date of the actual assignment, Canvas and WebWork sync about once every 24 hours. So that means if you've done nothing, you're going to start seeing a zero show up in your gradebook in Canvas. It's a thing. It happens. Every time you go in and work an extra question, you'll get a few more points, hopefully, you, from getting some stuff right. You're, you'll see your grade increase until you stop working on that assignment. Okay. So. Before we go over into web work, there is one other location of how you can get to this assignment. Notice this syllabus button over here to the side. If you click on it, and I've actually already pulled it up, you'll see a copy of everything that's due in the course by date. And you can then keep track of, hey, this assignment is due at whatever date it's due. And you can click on it there as well. And if you click on that link, you will get directly to the same assignment inside of Canvas. It still doesn't take you over to WebWork yet. The only link that takes you over to WebWork is this button right here, so let's click on it. Whoops, and notice this may happen. So what happens if you get something like this? All that means is there was a timeout between WebWork and Canvas, so let's go ahead and reinitialize this, and we'll reload it. And notice now it reloaded just fine, okay? Don't freak out when these things happen. There is a passback of talking between each other, between the web work server and Canvas. And if you leave things so that they're not talking to each other or it's been a while, there's a timeout that can happen. What you just do is you either refresh your browser or close everything down and reopen it and it'll be just fine. Okay. And yes, if you're working on your web work and maybe it's been a couple hours for whatever reason, maybe you left your browser window open to come back to it, maybe you're working, looking down at a piece of paper, got distracted, whatever, sometimes it'll happen in the middle of actually working on a problem too. Don't freak, just reload everything and it'll be just fine. Okay. Now, in terms of what you see here and what this means to work, at each problem, you can go ahead and just click on any one of these problem numbers you want. Um, up to you, which order you want to go through them. They're just numbered one through, in this case, 11. Um, this right here tells you how many attempts you've taken already. So notice I have actually previewed a couple of these questions already. This count here tells you that I've gone ahead and attempted problem three twice, problem seven three times, and I haven't put in any attempts for anybody else. 
Down here, this tells you how many attempts you have for each problem. By default, most questions for most of my courses, I just leave it at unlimited. That way you can try as many times as you want and go ahead until you get the right answer. I have definitely in the past noticed that some students have tried it. The one that stands out is one person I saw tried attempted a question 88 times. I'm not expecting you to do that many times. Before then, go get help either from a tutor or reaching out to me, okay? I'm not expecting that. Over here, by default, I have each question worth one point. It doesn't actually correspond to one point in your grade. All that means is it is worth exactly the same. Each question is worth the same. That being said, um, specifically, if you are in discrete math or math 1165, your web work is set up a little bit differently. You'll see problems that are sort of sub problems. Actually, I don't know if you guys can see it or not because I don't have a student account that I can preview that. But you guys do have what is called adaptive learning in your web work, which means once you've attempted a problem a certain number of times in web work, you have a new helper problem that opens up. Some of them are just easier for practice that will help you out with the real problem for credit. And some of them are if you get that second helper problem with a different setup, you can actually get full credit for whatever the main problem was. Okay? All of my other courses are not set up that way. It's set up like what I'm showing you right here. Okay. Now, where was I? Right. Other things. Up at the top, you will see something that says closes, and it will give a date. It will be always 11.59 p.m. What this is is that is the last date and time that you can work on web work and submit for credit uh, this assignment. In other words, that get, however far that is after the actual due date of this assignment, that's the period of time when you can turn in this assignment late. And how all web work sets are set up is that this is the Friday before the next test after the assignment was originally due. So if the assignment was originally due two weeks before a test, that Friday before the test, the assignment will close out. If the assignment was due the week before a test, you've only got a couple of days for this grace period, this period when you can turn in something late. Now, why does that matter? Because the day after whatever that date is, is when I'll release the answers. And I'll show you how you can spot the answers here once we go into a problem. So let's click on problem eight. Okay, so you click on problem eight, and in this particular course, for this particular question, that's the one that popped up, okay? And what does it ask you to do? It asks you to input some things, so not even looking at the problem, I'm going to input two things, okay? Maybe a five and a seven over x, okay? You have three buttons at the bottom. One of them right here says preview my answers. Preview my answers literally just shows you what you typed in, it shows you how web work is reading it, and then if there's an issue, it'll tell you what the issue is. So this one here says, hey, you can't use this division symbol. I'm sorry, that's not allowed. And if you look back up into where this box, which was supposed to be E, and where this box, which was supposed to be D, was, you see that they're actually supposed to be real numbers. Okay? So let's get rid of this part, and we'll do that again. Whoops. So pre my, preview my answers again. So notice preview here, if you typed in things in the correct format, well, literally it shows you, hey, almost the same thing. Um, if you're dealing with fractions and need a lot of parentheses, this previewing can be very nice. Now, middle button. Middle button right here says check your answers. Oh, wow. I just totally arbitrarily made up those numbers. So one of them happened to be right. Awesome. So this will tell you whether your answers are right or wrong. Now, those, both of those two buttons will be enabled the entire time, whether the set is past due, uh, not due yet, or after the late date when the answers are available. After the close date, once the answers are available, it doesn't matter what you type in here, web work will not save your answers and will not save your scores. So even though you can always come back in to use these as review questions, your grades won't change after that final close date. Okay. Now, notice they are color-coded green for you got it right, red for you didn't get it right. Notice, though, something that happened. Under those buttons, you have two things that 
it's tracking for you. One is it reminds you how many attempts you have. That's the second line that's highlighted. This one's saying you have unlimited attempts remaining. So for example, maybe you only had three attempts for the problem. I really don't like doing that, so you probably won't see many of those, except for maybe one course. Um, and it'll then give you the countdown of how many you have left up here. This tells you how many times you've attempted the problem. Now notice we just checked our answers, but it didn't log that we attempted the problem. And if you look at the score for this question, our score is still actually nothing. Okay, Why? That's because we didn't actually ask the WebWork to score our answers yet. If you want to actually get a grade, you have to hit submit answers. And many people actually end up um, hitting the button submit answers every time instead of doing either of the other two. Why? Because it shows you what you typed in, it does include the preview, it does include the result, and it goes ahead and gives you a score right there. WebWork does save the highest score, so if for whatever reason you stop, you change that five that's correct to something else, um, WebWork actually does still keep the 50% cor correct in there. Weird but true. Okay. Now, you keep going, you keep doing guesses, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Now, right now, what you can see as the instructor version of this question is the same thing that as a student, you would see after the web work set is closed. And when I say closed, I mean answers available. And the thing that you'll see that's new once the answers become available is this little checkbox right there that says correct answers. Some questions will have a solution not all of my courses have solutions for all of their questions, um, especially if you are in uh, differential equations, you have should have solutions show up for most of yours. Um, in calculus, which is this one, you guys don't have a lot of solutions that show up. And in discrete, you guys have sort of hit or miss in terms of solutions, and I have forgotten with the other ones. Okay, So you click that button, what happens? You do have to push one of these buttons to actually have it recheck. And what will happen is you have an additional column over here that pulls up. And if you had anything that was incorrect before, it will go ahead and show you then what that correct answer is. Okay, And that's how you can go in and check to see what the correct answers were. You do have to go in and actually push this little button on each of the questions that you want to look at, though. So it's not super duper efficient. But you can, um, if you had any questions you were really struggling with, that you just couldn't get to that correct answer and you didn't come to anybody for help for it, you can go back and see what those correct answers are. And notice if that button is not shown, you have the normal stuff you see um, when you're still getting credit for the questions. Okay. Now, the only other thing that happens with WebWork is, and let me go back to the main list, Notice this problem set here is 11 problems. If you look to see how many points each WebWork set is out of inside of Canvas, they are almost all out of 10 points. I think that's true of all the courses because that's my default is homework 10 points each. Okay, What happens when the scores over in, Canvas, over in WebWork sync up to Canvas is they will scale. Okay. So if you ended up getting something like 9 out of 11 questions right in web work, you take that fraction 9 out of 11, you can plug it into your calculator and you'll see it's like 0.9 something something. Okay, So actually it's got to be a little bit less than that. That's actually now... Yeah, it's 0.81 repeating is what it is. Over in Canvas, when the 9 out of 11 gets shot over to Canvas, the scale to get it back into 10 points, plug the fraction you see in WebWork that's correct into your calculator, shift the decimal point over one point. A 9 po problems correct out of 11 in WebWork would turn out to be an 8.18 score over in Canvas. Why? Because that decimal of 0.81 and then the 81 repeating multiply it by 10 and that gives you the um, canvas conversion. Okay, In other words, it just rescales it to 10 points. So in this one where there's more problems than 10, it might look like it's a little bit smaller number than you're expecting, but when you have fewer questions than 10, it'll actually pop, bump up a little bit 
So like, for example, if you had, I don't know, five questions, each one of them over in Canvas would actually be worth two points, that type of thing. Okay. But that is the crash course of everything you could possibly need to know about web work other than actual math content.